Have you been seeing these stories in New York and Georgia and Florida of illegal squatters taking over people's properties, landlords, people who inherited their properties? Well, how do you keep your property from being taken over by illegal squatters? This is becoming a huge problem. This is not a media overblow here. There's literally in one county in Georgia, 1,200 people illegally squatting in Georgia in this one county, tying up properties. And there's some of these problems in South Carolina, but nowhere near as bad. Let's go to the news on your screen here. A TikToker, an immigrant, illegal immigrant, went to his TikToker fan base and told immigrants how to invade American homes and invoke squatters' rights. And that video has been viewed four million times. So this guy here on your screen uh, went in and told uh, basically his followers and whoever shared this video that if a home uh, is uh, vacant and it's become a public burden, so we should seize it and invade these abandoned properties. So this is the the this is the entitlement state that this country's uh, gotten to. Uh, I'm not going to get into the politics of all the illegal immigrants coming into the country, but they've got to find somewhere to live, and they're not integrated into society. They're kind of like thrust out into the, into the community. So you have that combined with the natural problems we've got in the country leading to people just simply finding vacant homes and moving in. This is becoming mainstream, where if a home is vacant, sitting around, Someone scopes it out. They take a look. They see no activity. There's not a sign for sale in the yard. There's not a for rent sign in the yard. And even if there is, sometimes those become the targets where someone simply watches it, scopes it, moves in. And because a lot of people are trying to uh, remotely manage their properties, let's say you live in New York and you've got a property in Charleston and you're in, it doesn't matter if it's a $2 million property or $150,000 property, if you can even find one of those around here uh, at 150000 it doesn't matter that they can be moved into, you can be unaware of this activity. And by the time you figure it out, there is a fake lease forged by the so-called tenant who's a squatter let's call him illegal squatter that's what they are but nonetheless they forge a lease they present the lease uh to the law enforcement when you call for trespassing and law enforcement does the typical punt which is oh i'm sorry this is a civil matter there's two reasons they do that first of all it's confusing because they don't know if you're just telling them that to get them to move out so you can take possession and conduct an illegal eviction or they just don't want to deal with it and it's kind of 50 50 as to which one of those it is so the question becomes what can you do if you own a piece of real estate in the charleston area or anywhere in the country to make sure or to at least be relatively sure that you won't have illegal squatters. Well, let's talk about the law first. So if someone goes into a property that's vacant, let's say it's an heir's property, it's tied up in probate, a family member has passed away, furniture or no furniture, power or no power, it doesn't matter, and the heirs aren't going to the property on a regular basis, and the, and the, and the squatter can prove that they've been in the property for more than 30 days without a lease. They don't have to fake one. They have to forge anything. They don't have to commit fraud. They don't have to do anything further illegal. The illegal act wasn't prosecuted because you didn't know for 48 days or post 30 days that there's someone in this property. So they could say, hey, I've been living here uh, and I have the right to stay here. It's kind of like Airbnb properties, if you lease an Airbnb property and someone stays more than 30 days in most jurisdictions, that property is now a long-term lease in the sense of now you have to go to eviction court to get a hold over Airbnb tenant out versus someone who's trespassing who was supposed to be in there for seven days. This is some of the reasoning for short-term rental permits that's justified by the government. Most of the reasons, I believe, are unconstitutional and just to, you know, stick their hand in in your cookie jar uh, where these local municipalities get involved, but this is at least one of the good things where you have a regulated short-term rental. Um, Now, back to the squatting problem. If the property has no power, they could move in today, turn the power on in their name and say, hey, we we have possession because the power is on. So one of the things you do for occupancy checks when you have a tenant not paying rent and you file for eviction is I call weekly to do an occupancy check based upon whether the power's on or off. So if the tenant had power in their name and they turn the power off, then I'm safely assuming 
usually, that the tenant, there's been some exceptions to this since COVID, but safely assuming that I had one that was living there with no power. That's how bad and destitute their situation was. But most of the time, 95% of the time, if the tenant turns the power off, then you can, uh, you know, argue that, um, that the, uh, the tenants moved out, right, and take possession of the property, start to clean it up, trash it out. Uh, usually you'll find that they've moved their valuables or their things that they care about out of the property at that point, even if they've left some trash. There's some laws. We'll do another video about what you have to do with all the stuff that's there to be safe. But for now, let's move back to squatting. So if you've got a property with no power on, someone turns the power on, that's a pretty good uh, indicator uh, for the squatter anyway that they have they have possible legal possession. You may go, well, wait, Brian, how, how does somebody just move into a property, take over the property, rekey? the doors, turn the power on, and, and a week later I call the cops for trespassing. The cops show up and go, we can't do anything. How is that even legal? Well, technically it's not legal, but they have the power on, the property wasn't secure, and it's their word against yours. There's no contract, and if there is one, they could make it up. Right, And if you made up anything, then it would be a legal contract, which needs to be adjudicated in a courtroom by a magistrate in, the, in, the, in Charleston, Berkeley, Dorchester counties or beyond here in South Carolina. So how do you make sure the, that this doesn't happen to your property? Well, first of all, you need to be doing at least weekly property checks on vacant properties. This is why having a property manager is important if you're not down the street from your property that is responsible to deal with this. Because if they mess it up, and you've hired a property manager, and there's a squatter, then they're liable to some extent to take care of the problem. The second issue is, is if you're not inspecting the property on a regular basis because you can't, then someone can move in, and it can be a while before you know what happens. I had one the other day on a property I own over in Georgia that someone said there was somebody broke in the door, and there were people in there trying to commit a scam. And I immediately sent people over. Uh, we found no one, but ultimately that's kind of how it goes down. If you don't, if you don't run straight to the property and I have people on the ground over there to manage these properties that, that, that my company owns. But, um, this is a really scary thing for me because I, I have seen kind of a gamut of how the system can be used. And let me tell you what can happen here in South Carolina, because I'm dealing with one right now where the tenant is legally in the property, has a lease, made a couple of payments, didn't make the payments after, uh, making small payments and doing workouts failed. We end up with a couple of months behind on, on the lease. This is me trying to work with someone. I'm, I'm learning very quickly on the properties that I own to just file the eviction immediately. Even if I'm working with someone, I can always withdraw it. And that's the answer to these. Immediately file an eviction the minute you have a reason to get someone out of a property. And if you work it out, great, you know, but you can always withdraw that eviction. So then the tenant goes to a hearing. And this could be a squatter or a tenant. It doesn't matter at this point because you've got a non-paying occupant legally or illegally in the property. How they gained occupancy in state law, South Carolina now doesn't matter. And you file that eviction, and then they're, they, they wait till the very last minute and say they get served. Now they want a hearing, right? So that delays it another week or two or three, depending on which county you're in. It's faster in Berkeley than it is in Charleston. And so then you go to the hearing, and they don't show up. Oh, well, great. Perfect. My eviction's ordered. A couple days later, I can come pick up my, my writ of possession or my eviction order, and I can have the sheriff come out, bring the crew, move everything out, see you later, you're gone. Nope, that's not how it works. The game that they play, the trick that they play, is they then file an hour after their missed hearing that they didn't show up for, they file a uh, motion for appeal. And then a couple of more weeks goes by, they don't have to pay the rent, and then they show up for the appeal hearing, and then the judge issues a bond. Where this gets tricky with squatters is if you have a squatter in the property, there's no bona fide lease. So what is the bond for the squatter? So in South Carolina, in most cases, you're going to have a squat. If you have a squatter, you're going to have the squatter. You're going to call the police. They're in a 75% chance not going to do anything for various reasons, many of which I don't like. Uh, and then you're going to have a uh, file an eviction. You're going to have the eviction posted within about 10 or 15 days. If you file an eviction, you also need to send a letter to the house to the unknown occupants that says, we're filing an eviction. You have 10 days to vacate uh, or start paying some rent, which may, it may be hard to swallow your pride and ego and do this. These people are in my property illegally, right? But you do it nonetheless. Then after you file a 10-day notice, then you get an eviction 
uh, filing going and then the eviction is posted and then they file an appeal, which is what they'll do, or file it for a hearing, they will or won't show up for the hearing. And at that hearing, they'll be ordered to be thrown out. And about 30 to 60 days after all this crap started, you've lost rent and they've done no telling what damage to the property. Yep, that's the way it is now. I'm sorry. Uh, then, of course, you end up uh, likely going to have a he- appeal because they all know how to work the system. And then you're going to have an appeal hearing, and there's going to be some bond set. That means they got to pay this much on the first, late after the fifth, then you can get the eviction. So at least at this point, there's some chance in South Carolina you could actually get uh, them out. Berkeley County is the only county I've experienced with this process fully played out recently, so I can report directly that it's pretty fast in Berkeley County. Charleston is slower and harder I don't know about Dorchester. I'd assume it's somewhere in the middle. But you go to places like Fulton County, Georgia, DeKalb County, Georgia, and we'll put their politics aside for a second. And just to get an eviction hearing is taking four to six months. So when you hear these stories, you need some local concept to it. If you have property there, then the tenants are taking advantage of the slow, mismanaged court system. They're too busy with Trump and Fannie Willis, I guess. Fannie Willis and Trump, whichever side of that you're on, that they can't actually serve the people uh, in the community that are paying the taxes that are dealing with the real problems of our society. So that's kind of the different contrast. I think we're doing things a little better here, believe it or not, here in uh, the Tri-County than some parts of the country are. In New York, it's even worse. Squatters can stay for a year and a half. So uh, we are moving in that direction slowly concept creep we're moving in that direction but right now you get a squatter on a property reasonably speaking uh especially if you hire a lawyer if you don't have a property manager you don't hire a lawyer you know most of these cases can be resolved in in south carolina in our tri-county in in somewhere between 60 to 120 days best to worst you know if they get really really uh, clever, then they can draw out for a long time. But the way the bond process works here, you should at least be getting some payments into the appeal process of the eviction because the magistrate's courts here are running a lot more fluidly than in some parts of the country where they're taking 6 to 12 months to get. I've had evictions in, in Georgia uh, as recent as the last one, which was in January, that I filed in June with a lawyer and did everything the right way, best case scenario, and the eviction was filed in June, the hearing was in September, the order was in September, and the eviction was so backed up we couldn't do it till January. So when you see these news stories, that's sort of like outside the bubble of the low country, but it's moving in that direction here, so we really need to stay on top of this. Hope this has been helpful. Keep the power on your vacant properties. Have them checked once a week, and make sure that if someone's in there, you call law enforcement immediately, and if they don't do their job, which is more likely than not, file an immediate eviction and do that with your uh, properties as well uh, when you have a tenant that's holdover or not paying the rent. Housedog.com online. Thanks for watching.